Okay. So this was a woman I met a few months ago in the medical ward. She had severe pneumocystis pneumonia, and she also had bilateral pneumothoraces. Pneumothorac that's a hard word. And this CT illustrates how sick she was. Note the, let's see if I can find a pointer someplace else. Note the subcutaneous emphysema on the chest. And she was severely hypovolemic because she was too sick to eat and drink. And she had had restrict restrictions with, uh, with fluids due to the respiratory failure. She was being isolated in the ward as this was AIDS. And she was also deaf and mute. And now she needed VV ECMO and a central line. So, bilateral pneumothoraces with subcutaneous emphysema on the neck, covering the neck, covering the right subclav, really small collapsed femoral veins. I had one, one shot. It was the left subclav. It was a high stakes, complicated case, but I managed. So, what Ola just described there was the highest level of complexity of central lines. Uh, would you have been able to manage, or do you want to be able to manage that kind of case? The thing is, when these cases come along, we do not rise to the level of our expectations, we fall to the level of our training. But we think the highest level of central lines is attainable for uh, anyone, but it requires a concerted effort and an advanced training program. So, this is our suggestion how you can become a Seldinger master. I'm Ramin Lunden, and we're from Lund in Sweden. Now, the first step is moving beyond the short axis view of the vein with the out-of-plane cannula visualization that uh, is still very, very common. It may get the line in, but you do not know where the tip is. You may puncture the back wall, the lung, the artery, and in hypovolemic patients, it can be just very difficult to find the lumen. There is a better way. Your central lines should be placed using in-plane needle visualization. In this image here, we have the, uh, the head up here, and we're going to can cannulate the jugular vein. We approach the vein from, uh, from this angle, and in the ultrasound picture, we visualize the tip all the time as it approaches the target, bam, and when we puncture the vein. That's in plane cannulation. And the projection you see on the ultrasound here is the excellent oblique internal jugular, and it is the only technique we use for IJ cannulas. So you achieve it, of course, by placing your ultrasound plane at a 45-degree angle here, halfway between the long axis and the short axis. You can clearly see the artery. You can see the cannulation path when you puncture, and you have a nice elongated vein so you don't back wall the oblique. I love it. As your technique improves, you go lower as demonstrated in this pre-scan here. The puncture site here is the IJ, close to where it joins the brachiocephalic vein. The oblique IJ results in a lateral, preferably low, central line, or in this case, a dialysis cath. These have superior comfort and hygiene. Low rider IJs. If uh, we can compare them to the old-school out-of-plane access techniques, which invites results such as these, which have passed through our ICUs, with the lines peeling away the dressing, with stubble growing into them, purulent drainage from the tracheostomies running into them, or food and drool contaminating them. But also consider comfort. We do large esophageal and cardiothoracic surgeries, and these patients, they have long and strenuous mobilizations to do, go through in the ward. Now, everybody, pinch your neck here, just under the mandible, just, just there, and then move your, head, move your head, just twist your head. Imagine being through one of the most strenuous periods of your life, and every time you move your, your head, you're reminded that you have plastic running into your neck. It doesn't have to be like that. 
Another advantage of the oblique lowrider is that every time you place one, you're practicing the skills you need in a safe context, in a safe locale, that allows you to take the next step. We believe your primary central line technique should be subclavian, the king of lines. <laughs> in this picture here, just to orient you, the, it's the patient's head um, under, the, uh, under the cover, and we're cannulating the right subclavian vein. In the ultrasound, you see it as this black band here. We visualize the needle going forward, bam, and we visualize the puncture of the vein. Beautiful. So, why is the subclavian our first-hand choice always? Well, to begin with, the internal jugular is a prized piece of real estate. By routinely using the subclav, the IJ is available for uh, dialysis, ECMO, or if your patient needs pacing uh, uh, catheters. And then there is, of course, comfort and hygiene. If an oblique low rider is good, a subclavian is even better for the patient. Nurses prefer them as well, with the lines running away from the patient and not having it up in, up in the face. Physician comfort is also important. It is easier to stand by the side of the bed like this, rather than wrangling under the infusion lines and the ventilator, and uh, going to the, towards the head of the bed. You can, from this position here, where Ola is standing, you can place uh, an oblique IJ or a subclavian without shifting your position, which lowers, the, if you prep the entire area, it lowers the threshold from switching from one to the other, which is very important if you run into trouble. Finally, all your central lines should be right-sided, as they come with one critical advantage. Ludwig Wittgenstein wrote that one cannot see into another's heart. He clearly did not have access to a microconvex probe. <laughs> the small footprint and excellent depth penetration of these allows for the supraclavicular fossa view, and that is going to change your practice. In this image here, once again, the patient's head is up here, and we have cannulated the right subclavian vein. The probe is placed above the clavicle, peering behind it into the mediastinum. In the ultrasound picture, we can see the subclavian coming from here, depending how you, how you turn it, and we can see the superior vena cava. And you see this sparkly line here? That's the guide wire. Let's have a look at it. We are confirming that the guide wire is in the correct position prior to dilating or jamming in our big catheters and doing possibly larger damage. We also know where it's going to end up. We also know that we do not descend too far, triggering an arrhythmia in a patient who might be in post-cardiac arrest and very arrhythmogenic, so we don't give them a VT. Under the ultrasound control, we see how far we go with the J. But there's more. In this patient, we have the same orientation as the previous patient. If you observe the ultrasound image here, we're coming from the right subclavian, and you can see that the guide wire has uh, deviated cranially. And that's a problem, and it makes for an embarrassing x-ray the day after. Now check this out. Under the supraclav fossa view, we retract the guide wire, twist it around, advance it, and then we get it into the right position. Beautiful. It's a wonderful power, power move to master. We have another couple of tricks, what you do using the supraclav fossa view, where you get the guide wire right from the first instance. Now. Some will argue that cannulating the subclavian is like sailing between Scylla and Charybdis, with the subclavian artery on the one side and the lung on the other. This is a valid point, but it can and is mitigated by good in-plane technique. 
our mantra, and I repeat it a couple of times every day I'm in my clinic. If you do not see the tip of the needle, you do not proceed. Now, subclavians are more advanced than IJs, but by routinely placing uh, subclaves, you're not only giving your patients better lines, you're doing practice runs for the difficult cases, like the one Ola told you about in the beginning. But wait, there's more. When you have mastered advanced Seldinger lines, you have a skill set that will allow you to do other advanced procedures. You'll be able to place better chest tubes. It's not me yet. It is not you. <laughs> we concede that when it comes to pleural effusion, sometimes you need to be Athena, the goddess of war, armed with a spear and place a large bore chest tube. Unfortunately, in many institutions, it used to be like this in our place, it, this was the standard approach for all pleural effusions. But this is, it's a painful procedure, and there are risks. The drain can end up in the lung. It can end up in the liver. It can end up in the ventricle. Or the pulmonary artery. Or, and this is not uncommon, it can end up in the extrathoracic cavity. And even if the, the, the drain is in the pleura, the open technique and the one-step technique often results in a suboptimal location compared in this CT scan where the fluid is. So now, thank you. <laughs> so most of the times you should be Athena, the goddess of wisdom, and use ultrasound and place an H French pigtail catheter um, instead. These will do for most effusions. They are safer, much less painful, and you'll use ultrasound. So, place the probe on the patient's flank where the diaphragm meets the thoracic wall. And this is the microconvex probe again, perfect for cannulation, as it can see between the ribs. So this is the pleural line, this is the diaphragm, and the black void is the effusion. And we also identify the neurovascular bundle, which is here, and we can plan a perfect cannulation path that avoids it. And now we use in-plane skills to navigate the plant path and visually confirm a perfect spread of the local anesthesia in the intercostal space. The result is better anesthesia. So, this is the, the real cannula, and we trace the tip along the plant path, staying clear of the neurovascular bundle. And as we reach the pleura, we may ask the patient to hold the breath. And there, the puncture, the tip inside the pleura, not in the diaphragm, not in the neurovascular bundle. And now we introduce the guide wire, a critical safety advantage is the fact that we confirm that the guide wire is in the pleura, it's not in the abdomen, it's not in the lung, it's not extra thoracic, before we do major damage with the dilator and the drain. So this is the rest of the procedure and the result. It's safer, cleaner, less pain for the patient, more comfortable to wear. And we can apply the exact same skill set for pneumothoraces. Uh, so this is the patient with the pneumothorax. No lung sliding in the ventral position. Lung sliding laterally. No pneumothorax over there. And note the small amount of local anesthesia needed for this small space. And now for the puncture. Watch as it breaches the pleura. Oof. Perfect puncture. And as you have positioned the drain, you make, want to make sure that it's in the ventral position where the, where the air will be. So you pull it up towards the, the chest wall as far as possible. And you note the return of lung sliding ventrally. There is no more pneumothorax, perhaps a little one. 
Um, that was that one. Uh, and when you reach the gut level in plane selling your skills, you may want to take it one step further. And you can apply it to the pericardial effusion drains. And note the parallel approach to the heart. The fluid is over here. You go very parallel to the heart. Exact same skill set. Right. In conclusion, what we describe here is a pathway to become a Seldinger master. So every line you place should be a part of that, getting that skill set. And it requires practice, 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 and a good organization around you to, to get backup, help, and complications, of course. We want to take time to pay an homage to Sven Ivar Seldinger, the Swedish radiology radiologist who invented the Seldinger technique. We have a lot of video material available on our website to help you along. Follow us on Blue Sky and get our YouTube updates for our new videos. And we also love to tra uh, travel and talk about central lines. So uh, we'd love to come to your institution. Um, and as it happens, this evening we have a table in the workshop where we're demonstrating some of these ultrasound moves and we are uh, uh, demonstrating how we place the chest tubes using this variant of, of, the, of the standard techniques. Thank you.